through this phase here, you can see that uh, it brought in a lot of buyers of puts. You see that? It brought in a lot of buyers of puts through that phase. Do you see how it's happened? And when it brings in a lot of buyers of put options, why, what does that cause? Well, it basically starts to stall the top edge. We would start to expect to see a, an increase in volatility pricing because of the demand for volatility products. This drive here on the put side this drive here on the put side is an increase for volatility long products. And because there's an increase for volatility longs, it kind of puts in a top edge at that stage, doesn't it? So you can see that at 9.39 New York, we start seeing that top edge forming. And obviously that top edge is the top edge that we sold into, right? That top edge is the top edge that we sold into, that 14.39 high on the S&P, which has just traded the target, by the way, at 34. Remember, we had the target at 34? It bounced literally on the tick, guys, at the target of 34. Did you all see it? So you can all recognize that it bounced literally to the tick at 34, guys. So we'd already talked about this based on that initial bracket. We'd given you the measured move. We told you where it was going to go to. We told you what to expect at that price and you've had the bounce straight off that 34. So if you sold 50s, 34s is 17 points, $850 profit. That is reasonable, guys. Now, there's a bit of an unwind of those put options now, so we might be able to pick up a buy at lower prices, but at the moment, I'm happy to be on the sidelines now, waiting for the next piece of information, and then we'll pick up the next trade when it shows up, guys. In fact, I'll just, as I said, I'll leave that on to see if we get any more, uh, any more signals of any sort creeping into this as a moving storyline. Another market that we uh, talked about this morning was looking at the, um, the FOB, the NOB, and the TOOS 10s, uh, the TOOS 10s TUTS in terms of DVO1s. And we highlighted some of the quality in this trade. We highlighted the idea of selling the red to buy bonds. And if we look back at this for a second, if we look back at this for a second, you'll see that uh, one of the trades we talked about was when the, when the, this is the FOB spread DVO1s, by the way, guys, FOB spread DVO1s. Okay, so with the FOB spread DVO1s, uh, the red line is significantly higher than it was before. The blue line is lower, the black line is lowest, the price is lower still. That is a buy trade in bonds. Well, if that's a buy trade in bonds, because we're selling the red line. Is this a sell trade in bonds because you're buying the red line? Yes, it is. So that's a sell trade in bonds because you're buying the red line. So obviously that gives you a nice bit of rotation off that price. If you're buying the red line here, are you selling bonds? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Now take a look at what happens again. Look, red line comes in, but look at the bottom edge. Do you see at the bottom edge? the red line goes above the bottom edge. Now, the reason why I don't like the sales is because ultimately this is, the curve is not with us, the curve's against us by selling into this. I would rather be long when the back end of the curve is relatively high, relatively steep. Why would that be the case? Well, because obviously that means that there's a drop in short-term interest rates. If there's a drop in short-term interest rates, I don't want to be selling bonds. I want to be buying bonds preferably, do you understand? It's called the grail trade. So I don't want to be selling these highs. I do want to be using them to take profits against my long position from before. But obviously I don't really want to be heavy shorts when I'm looking at a market that is, has got an upside move. You understand, comprendi? So when we see that, is this not a perfect opportunity to buy into? Sure. The black line is now divergent off the bond price. And that means that we now have, remember, this trades because of something very, very exciting about the bond market. The equal and opposite rule based on the short term against the long term parts of the curve. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So the equal and opposite parts of the curve rule is very, very straightforward. This is the curve between this, this, the beginning and the end of the curve. If this part of the curve is doing that, this part of the curve must be doing that. 
as this part of the curve does that, this part of the curve must do that. So there's the equal and opposite, right? So obviously, if the fight is doing this, sorry, not the fight, if the fob is doing that or the knob spread is doing that, then obviously this means that for that to happen, this must be trading down. So in other words, short-term rates must be trading to the downside, do you understand? So if short-term rates are trading to the downside, what is happening? Short-term rates trading to the downside? I want to be long bonds, you understand? I want to simply be long bonds. So if I want to be long bonds, and I see the, the, the FOB spread so high as this, I really want to be buying bonds, not selling, do you understand? I really, really, really want to be buying bonds. Because you don't often get as much value in your bond trade as this one's giving you here. So I want to be long bonds. And what happened to that bond? Well, we absolutely killed it. We've absolutely killed it, Reeve. Did you get it? Did you get it? Did anybody see it? Did anybody take it? It's a super, super, super trade. Nice. Yeah. So with that toxic button.